Hello, welcome to this video tutorial. David Healy here at Total Composure. In this video, I want to show you how to record continuous controller data inside Sibelius. I'm using a foot pedal to record the CC data. And the first thing to do is go into the note input um, tab on the ribbon, uh, slightly different in Sibelius 6. Click on input devices. You can also do this by going to file and preferences and then input devices. And you just want to make sure you have your um, input device enabled. In my case, it's um, a foot controller. Um, if, if you're just using the mod wheel on your keyboard, you just need to have your keyboard enabled. And when you move it, you should get this little test box here. The meter should go up and down. All right, that's the first stage. I'm going to be using a crossfade patch from East West Symphonic Orchestra. I'm just going to enter a few notes in. Okay. And if I play this on um, the keyboard, and I'm going to move the foot pedal, That's entering modulation wheel, CC1 data. And as far as I'm aware, there isn't an input transformer in Sibelius. So you can only input the data that your input device sends out. You can transform the CC data to another CC message. So convert CC1 to CC11, for instance, using something like Bejewel or MIDIOX and feeding the MIDI data into that before it goes into Sibelius. But it's a bit long winded. Okay, so now I'm going to record some continuous controller data over this. So we highlight the passage we want. We click, so bring the transport over. Click record, and then move the controller. Now there's another step we've got to do before that, but I'm going to show you what will happen by default in Sibelius when you record continuous controller data. So you can see here above the staff, we've got the CC messages. So CC1, and that's the value, if I bring it up here. So that's the data it's putting in as I've moved the foot pedal. But it's chopped all our notes down. So there are two things we've got to do to avoid that. We're going to note input go into flexi time and you want flexi time options and I think that's what it's called in Sibelius 6 and first of all you've got to make sure you've got overdub tick down here and then you've got to have record into one voice and you've got to tick voice 2, 3 or 4 it's just got to be a different voice to where the notes are so if I undo that record it again our data is put in. Now supposing you wanted to delete this data you could click on one of the MIDI messages it's added and just press the delete key and hold it down it'll delete them one at a time but that takes quite a while. The um, solution I've found is to highlight the section of music that has continuous control information that you want to remove. Go to the home tab click filters and then scroll down and select voice 2. You can also press Control, alt and shift 2 and that'll just highlight that data. You can press delete and it's gone. Another way of adding continuous controller data, you can select passage. If I put, if we do a crescendo, put a hairpin in. And this by default in Sibelius 7 adds expression data or volume control data, depending on how your sound set is set up. It may also add modulation data depending on the sound set. But by default, it's expression, CC11. If you want something other than expression data, you can select a range like that, bring up the line options, and select just a basic line. And then if you highlight the part with that line, go to the play tab, 
click on plugins, add continuous controller change, and from here you can select mod wheel crescendo. And if you don't actually want mod wheel, you want something else, you can change the controller with this menu, and there's various settings you can put in. Now to get these values for basically your dynamic markings, what you can do is, if I come out of here, you can go to plugins, crash dim playback, and this has some example values which I find work quite well. If we do that, click OK, and it adds the messages in there. And you can actually delete them in the same way that we did before. You highlight the passage, go to filters, and select voice 2. This will also select the crescendo hairpin as well, so you can just hold control and uncheck that. With this method you've still got the C11 data being sent as well from the hairpins, so to get rid of that you can bring up the inspector and just untick these play on pass options. And if I play this back we should hear a crescendo. First I'll make these whole notes. And if I play this back, we should hear a crescendo. One final thing, if I copy this data over to a French horn track, again, this is East West Symphonic Orchestra, and I'm just gonna change the duration of some of these notes. just going to put in some technique text that will trigger a key switch so this becomes a dynamic crossfade patch as well. This key switch is unique to the sound set I'm using. Another useful technique when you've got short notes and you want to record data live is to reduce the tempo while you record. It can just make it a bit easier to put the data where you want. And if I bring that tempo back up to 100. Okay, so we've got this little this little line of music, two bars. And this particular patch has something called um, velocity triggered accents. So if the note velocity is higher, um, an accent is triggered. Within Sibelius, this patch is set to respond only to the mod wheel and expression. There is nothing in there to tell it to play different velocities. So the dynamic marking, the mezzo forte, that only sets the modulation wheel setting. So in order to get at these accents that are in this patch, we have to make use of the live playback facility in Sibelius. First, we've got to make sure live playback is turned on. You can do that here in the transport or up here on the ribbon. So I'm going to highlight this one and this one. I want to click on velocities. So when we add velocities, they will be displayed. I want to click on transform. Make sure the velocity tab is selected and select constant velocity. Doesn't matter what value is in there, click OK. And we get these little sliders which we can use to set the velocity. If I raise them up, and those little accents can really help. If I put one on a longer note, we'll get a nice accent at the beginning, and then we get the sustain as well. And it's basically a combination of a staccato patch and a sustain patch. Not all sample libraries have patches like this, but if you're using East West Symphonic Orchestra, it can add a, another touch of realism. I hope you found that useful. As always, please check out my website and my Facebook page and click the like button and click the like button on YouTube as well. And I'll see you again next time.